Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. For several videos we have been discussing chemical reactions in the chromosphere and today I wanted to wrap up this discussion. In order to do so I wanted to return to helium. That is because the presence of helium emission lines in the chromosphere has to be one of the most fascinating aspects of solar physics. You recall in this video that helium can produce strong emission lines in the chromosphere. However, that requires that one of the ground state helium electrons be promoted to higher energy shells. That is a tremendous requirement in the standard solar model as the chromosphere is said to have a temperature of only about 5000 Kelvin while the energy required to promote a helium electron requires temperatures in excess of 100,000 Kelvin. In the standard model, the photons used to accomplish this feat are said to arise in the corona. The ionized helium then recombines with a free electron to produce a helium atom in excited state. The entire proposal is much too fanciful and devoid of chemical insight. It also attempts to hide the fact that helium absorption lines are not seen in the sun. This is a serious problem and it is why the standard model has to invoke two steps to account for the helium emission lines. First ionization, then recombination. As a result, I want to propose an alternative and that involves the use of helium to recover protons and deliver them to condense hydrogen structures. You can think about it as the story of the electron thief and that electron thief is the proton. Just imagine for a moment that the helium atom and a proton encounter one another in the chromosphere. If they do, they might react to form a helium hydride cation as you can see here. In fact, if you read this paper, you will note that the first reaction mentioned is the formation of the helium hydride cation involving the collision of a proton with helium. The reaction is said to be based on radiative association because to reach a stable product a photon must be emitted. This implies that the reaction created an electron in activated state. Let us think about this for a moment and what could be happening in the sun if indeed the interaction of a proton with helium acted to promote a helium electron to a higher shell. Let's start with a helium atom. It has two electrons in its 1s shell initially. Now a proton approaches. In order to make the bond with the proton, the helium has to be able to participate in forming what is known as a sigma molecular orbital. But in order to do it, it has to get rid of one of its electrons by promoting it to the 2s shell. Otherwise it could be perfectly content with its own two electrons and never make a molecular bond with a proton. In the end, the mere charge on a proton can help facilitate this process as can collisional energy. At this point, helium would have one of its electrons in the 1s shell and one excited electron in 2s. The proton can then make two sigma bonds with the helium atom, each with a 0.5 bond order. Now in the paper just cited above, it is thought that the newly formed helium hydride cation in activated state will simply relax and give off a photon. That would place both electrons back in the ground state. But such emission has never been seen. As a result, what if before the relaxation can take place, the newly formed helium hydride cation encounters a condensed hydrogen structure? One could envision that the proton acts as an electron thief. It could steal the electron in the lower energy level and leave the helium and condense with the condensed hydrogen structure. The result is that the remaining helium electron is promoted to still a higher energy shell to facilitate the condensation of the hydrogen. So now you have activated helium ions where the activation had nothing to do with the absorption of light. The activated helium ion robbed of its ground state electron 
then finally relaxes and emits a photon characteristic of the helium-2 lines we see on the Sun. The proposal is indeed very interesting as it can account for the helium-2 lines chemically. In this regard, it is also interesting to note that despite massive efforts to find signs of the helium hydride cation in space, the molecule has never been found, as you can learn in this recent paper on the search for helium hydride molecular species in space. But perhaps the lines are not being found because the molecule is not allowed to emit before it has a chance to transfer the hydrogen or even a proton. This could be occurring because the helium hydride cation could be formed as a triplet, with both electrons having the same orientation. Therefore, the upper electron would be unable to return to the ground state until that electron has been removed. In that case, the presence of helium lines themselves could be the only residual sign of the existence of helium hydride cation. In this way, we can account for the production of the helium-2 lines, while at the same time explaining why the expected emission lines from activated helium hydride cations are never seen either on the Sun, in planetary nebula, or within dense molecular clouds, even though astrophysics has expected to see such lines. The key might well be the formation of a metastable triplet helium hydride cation. Note that if the proton decides to be contrite and leaves the helium hydride cation to interact with a condensed hydrogen structure, but without stealing the electron, one would thus have primed the helium atom to eventually give rise to helium triplet lines in the Sun. At this point, the triplet might be important in forming activated helium hydride upon reaction with hydrogen rather than protons, leading eventually to all the helium triplet lines. Clearly, there is a lot to consider in the chromosphere, but I just wanted to give you at least a sense of the role that chemistry could be playing in astrophysics. Chemistry is being dangerously ignored, especially when it comes to condensation reactions and their role not only in the chromosphere, but in the very birth of the stars. If you enjoyed the video today, promote the channel, mention the video to your local astronomy clubs, support me with a like, subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below and I'll see you soon on our next video.